Hello and welcome everyone, Ducky O'Brien here and today I'll be bringing you guys a preview of a game called Shop Titans. Shop Titans was developed and published by Kabam Games. It was released on May 5th, 2020 onto Steam, as well as mobile devices. It's a free to play game and there is cross play between the two. So I don't get into it. This is basically a shopping simulator. It's very similar to a game called Reketeer. Now I believe that game is far superior to this one, but uh, for other reasons I'll get into. But here is the base of the game. You craft items and you sell them to NPCs that wander in. So let's make some real quick. So look here. These are my mats and green means I am maxed out on it. Now I get energy, and what the energy is used for is surcharging the customer, so I can charge more. For example, if I spend 15 energy, I can get more money for the items that I sell. And I get energy back by making regular sales or, or by discounting them. Or you can try to small talk them and try to get some energy back. Now, this is the main shop here. It's a one by one tile and you're limited with the number of items they can build in it. The only way to build more is to expand. Right now I can't because I'm not high enough level, but it does take quite a bit of gold. So there are basically two different types of items you can build that help you in your endeavor to get more sales. Number one, these are the items that will display your items for sale. So the more of these that you have available, that means the more customers can look at different types of items and then buy them. So if I have like leather armor, I have cloth armor, I have a wizard robe, but I only have one mannequin, I can only have one out at a time. So you want a lot of these guys out. Doublet, I can make a doublet, I believe. Let's take a quick look, yes. Mushrooms. Hmm. The other type of item that you can buy are items to store base crafting materials like the iron bin, the wood bin, the leather bin, and the herb dryer. Now I believe there are going to be slightly more mats available. I'm not that high of a level yet. But these items are here and the more you have the more you can store. Now you can upgrade each of these. As you can see it'll take one hour to increase the storage space by a little bit. If you look here I increased storage capacity by six. Now you, you automatically get these mats over time. And you can increase that a little bit later. Let's buy this. Ruby Ring. Now I can craft three items right now, but if I wanted to craft more, I will either have to spend gems to level it up or wait for myself to level up to a certain level and then unlock it with money. Now if you spend gems, that means you just bypass leveling up and getting, you know, the money to unlock that extra crafting slot. It doesn't mean you get extra. So this is the main game. Basically you sell and once you level up, you can get more things, more items. And as you build more items, you unlock higher tier items of that kind. So if I build weapons, I'm going to unlock new weapon blueprints, but I have to research them with blueprints. Otherwise, I will not be able to unlock it. You can take a look at my inventory here. I have 17 research scrolls, so some high tier items cost more than one. I have wood chests. Now, <laughs> they take keys to unlock. It's kind of like TF2. Um, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. It doesn't feel good. You have uh, advanced crafting materials. I'm going to get into that a little bit later. But there you have it, and as you build certain items, this is a kind of a an abstract version of what is actually happening behind the scenes. There are people, NPCs, crafting these materials for you, and they will level up, and when they level up, it basically reduces the crafting time um, by like 1%, so it's very grindy. Alright, this is the main loop here. Other than that, you have goals that you can do and you earn fortune tickets, which you take to the slot machines. And that's right, this game has a slot machine. Okay, that sucks. 
<laughs> Alright, that was not bad. I did not want to auto spin that, but you get rewards. Uh, about a thousand tokens will get you 35 diamonds, and I think 100 will get you like 15 or something. Anyways, it's kind of grindy, but that's kind of a nice touch there. Let's go into the city. So here's the second part of the game. Now this is where they get you. <laughs> this is where they get you. You have all of these NPCs here. Each of them do one task. Like this guy, he is the tan in charge of the tannery. And as you can see here, he produces 6.5 leather per minute. Now if you want to increase that to 7, you're going to have to invest a lot of money to get to the next level. Now you don't have to do this because what you can do is you can simply just quit playing the game and come back a little bit later so that you have all of your stockpiles filled. Now this is the tailor. Uh, as you make cloth items, she will level up which will reduce the amount of time it takes to craft those items. And once you're maxed out, you have to invest in them to increase their level more. So I don't know if this is going to be worth it for you guys. And there are items here, buildings here, people here that are locked behind progress walls. So that's, that's how they get you. In addition to that, you have quests available. So let's see, we are low on mushrooms. You just send out one hero character and other people that you can hire. We're going to go explore here. 10 minutes later, it'll be ready. You just click on it and then they will just do a can animation for fighting and then it will drop items and how they get you is there is a rare item that requires you to pay the monthly subscription fee to get access to it's kind of like a battle pass uh, i think that's incredibly dirty but here we have characters so i have the default champion if you want to get more champions how you unlock them is they have a coin requirement and they will drop by your shop and they will have a certain order for you. For example, Lilu placed an order of 9 cloth shirts. So I have to go and craft 9 cloth shirts. Once that's done, I can sell it to them. And then I get 3 tokens. Or you can buy the tokens. And this is where I find it kind of gets a little devious. You get 10 tokens for $2.99. And you can't even unlock the hero for $3. You have to spend... 25 uh you have to get 25 tokens you have to buy three packs of these and that's going to be nine dollars you have to spend nine dollars to get one champion in the game for sia you needed 50 coins so you gotta spend 15 dollars that's a little bit ridiculous if you ask me that's i don't know how i feel about that uh <laughs> that doesn't feel right to me uh, and not only that, you can spend $100 on these diamond packs and let me tell you, they will not get you that far in the game. That's the thing that irks me the most. You can spend $100 and I should be able to unlock everything in this game. I paid $100 for it. I can pay, you know, I think Reketeer was available for like $5. It's an old game. It's a pretty good game. And now you're asking me to spend all this money. Um... I don't know, I find it devious in that you don't need to spend money on this game at all. You can get everything unlocked normally if you're patient enough. I'm speaking from experience because I played Clash of Clans pretty heavily. I had like 8 accounts. But like, this is preying on people with either new self-control or very little self-control or little kids who don't know better. And I think this kind of monetization has to stop. I'm okay with like the starter pack and you know even the battle pass is okay because it takes time and money to make games like this. People might think you know it just gets made automatically but the truth is there's a lot of upkeep, there's a lot of overhead, you gotta pay people to do the art, the programming, the music, you gotta pay for servers. So I understand you know you gotta pay them money to support them somehow but not like this guys, not like get rid of this kind of stuff. The reason why I don't like it is I believe the game has a lot of potential and that's where I'm going to get into the player driven market. This is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. You can take an item. So let's say the ruby ring was about $300, $3,000, right? 
it's 8,000 on the player driven market. So if I sold it right now, even with a surcharge, I would make more on the player driven market. In fact, let's go back and make some herbs. I believe it should be, uh, there you go. See, she leveled up because I made cra uh, cloth items and her crafting speed increased. Okay. Let's see. Make that, and then we'll make some minty leaf herbs. They will wait here, by the way, so there's really nothing to lose. You can equip the characters with your own items, by the way, that you craft or find. So I would highly recommend saving some of the rarer items for your characters so they have a better chance of surviving the fights. And honestly, the player driven market got me hooked. Uh, I couldn't stop. Oh, did I sell the ring? Shoot. I think I might have. I wanted to keep that. <laughs> oh well. Alright. I don't really care at this point. Alright. Let's make some shields, shiv. Uh, okay. So if you go back to the market here, look at the herb. It depends. The prices fluctuate. It's 180. So that's not quite a lot. Oh, right now it's at 1500, which is not bad. It was a little bit higher before. It's gonna wait. Now if you sell at or below the cost, the minimum trade value, obviously it's gonna sell. And, you know, 1500 versus 180, I think you can see why this is worth doing. I spent diamonds to unlock one more trade slot. I think this is the only thing worth spending diamonds on. I got all of these legitimately for free by grinding the game. And there you have it. In the span of a couple seconds, I turned some minty leaves into 1600 coins as opposed to getting 360 if I sold it to NPCs. So, hmm, let's surcharge that. Scale a little bit out of it. So that's the game. That's the game. Also, as you craft materials, like if you craft a lot of leather gloves, you're gonna get either the sell price will go up or the chance for rare items, like a rare quality for this glove to drop or maybe oh resources spent decreased nice also research scroll all right we'll craft some gloves then but yeah that player driven market changes the game quite a bit uh you can make massive amount of money if all you did was make items in high demand and sell it on the market. Uh, this is the way to go and this is why the game is really exciting. If you play the EVE Online or anything with player driven markets and you wanted to get a feel for market manipulation, this is the game to try it out because the learning curve is very low and the penalty or the cost if you make a mistake is very low as well. So for example, there are tactics that EVE Online players use the basic one is if you're rich enough, you can buy out low inventory items to create an artificial shortage and then sell really high. You can also do things like list items. If you're rich enough, you have to have a lot of inventory and a lot of money. You can list items low enough where it will force everyone to price below you if they want to sell something. And this is going to be a really low price. And if it's too low, someone will just buy all of it up and then sell list high. So you're going to be screwed. But if you have large enough inventory, large enough uh, pool of money where you can take a loss, basically what happens is everyone will start selling below you and you buy all of that up and then now you have a stock of items that you bought low and that you can sell high because the actual value was higher. You just artificially pushed it down for a short period of time. Now that kind of stuff blows my mind. I don't really have a feel for it. People who are really good at doing it on EVE Online, they are brilliant. They are masterminds. They control the Plex market. Uh, they can play with it at will and make a lot of profit from doing it. But if you wanted to kind of experiment with that in the game, this is 
the game for you. That's why I really like this game. That's why I, I see a lot of potential. But then when you see the monetization scheme, I'm like, guys, don't do this, please. You're ruining a good game. Don't put stuff behind progress walls where people are so tired of waiting for something to happen that you're trying to make them spend money. Um, you should always reward the player for playing your game instead of punishing them until they spend money. I think that's bad game design. That's plaguing the mobile market and that's plaguing even PC games like MMORPGs. Now I know people are going to disagree with me here but basically this is the same gameplay loop in MMOs like World of Warcraft where it takes a long time to level. You're not really doing anything other than mindlessly grinding and the reason why they do that is that takes a lot of time. If it takes a lot of time, you're going to have to pay that monthly sub when you don't have enough time for that month, right? You're going to have to play more. If you want to play more, then you got to pay more. So PC games do this as well. I see it mostly in MMORPGs, but honestly, the only reason why things should take a long time is there's a learning curve and it's it, you're trying to get better at the game. That's the only reason why they Things should take time. You're trying to memorize things, you're trying to get better, you're trying to develop skills, as opposed to making it artificially long, regardless of how skilled you are at the game, so that you can milk money from the player. So that's the only downside to this game. Other than that, I think it's actually fun. Again, the player driven market. What a game changer! What a game changer! Alright, this game is definitely not for everyone, but it's very accessible. Again, you can transfer your... I'm not going to show my shop ID, but you can transfer it by clicking on that. It'll give you a number. You can input that number into your mobile device. And voila! You are playing on your phone. You can play on the go. My quest is done. I'll show this off and we'll call it a day there. This is fully automatic. You can use seeds by the way, so you can use seeds to power up each aspect, attack, defense, etc. Now here it is. I got four staffs here. If I collect if I wanna collect it, I gotta spend ten dollars a month. Ridiculous. Yeah, I'm okay with them having a battle pass, uh, but not in addition to stuff like this. That is ridiculous. Alright, here's a chest. I have to use a key. <laughs> okay. Not bad, not a bad haul. Alright, I'm gonna call it there. There you have it, folks. This has been Shop Titans. <laughs> Alright, let's just get over with this. Well, I can't even click on the item. Let's craft some kunai. We're ninjas. Where are the kunai? Can I even make them? I feel like uh, I got them from a dude. Like I bought it. Anyways, that was Shop Titans. I actually enjoy this game quite a bit. Uh, I think it has a lot of promise if they stop trying to block people from enjoying the game by making them pay money. Like you're ruining the game by doing this. Uh, you, actually, you actually have a really good game here, a model. Uh, 
I think some of the monetization schemes kind of ruin it a little bit, but other than that, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I enjoy it quite a bit. I recommend checking it out if you have nothing to play. Uh, but yeah, again, highly recommend taking advantage of the player driven market. This is how you're going to make a lot of money. Don't just sell to NPCs. It's going to take forever. The amount of money I made in like 10 minutes versus an hour of just selling to NPCs is a huge difference. And I highly recommend checking it out again. Makes me excited to see the potential of this game. But there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed what you saw. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching. I re really do appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, things you'll like to see or for me to cover, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there. And catch you guys next time. Go make some money. Spiky stick. <laughs>